All right. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me this morning. I'm so happy that I can be here today. Um, this is a lovely day in the Pacific Northwest, and I find it very interesting that we can't ever seem to go from, um, we can't acclimate to anything. We go from one extreme to the other, and right now we're in that extreme uh, 80 degree weather, and so we actually have flooding, even though we're not raining. And that's because we have too much snow that's melting too fast. Well, I feel sorry for those that are on those um, rivers on the east side of the mountain. So it's pretty, pretty bad because when you hear about flooding, you expect a lot of rain, but not here. We have a lot of snow. So thanks for joining me again. My name is Diana Hinkle, and I wanted today address a issue that is pretty common with a lot of people. And I actually have friends that have issues with thyroid. And it came to my, I came to the conclusion that we need to find out a little bit more about thyroidism. And, you know, what is it? What could cause problems with the thyroid? <clears throat> what are the common symptoms? Symptoms. And what can you do naturally when addressing thyroid support? So those are what we're going to dig into a little bit. Not an extreme because we don't have the time to do that, but we will address a little bit of that. And a little bit about me and my background. This is my education, first off, for learning more about essential oils and what they can do for our health and wellness. And not just essential oils, but there are so many modalities and things that we can do to help us with our foundational health and, and, and self-care, uh, informed self-care. There's a lot that goes into that. I have a dental background of over 30 years. And when I was introduced to doTERRA and the essential oils, I was totally amazed because I didn't know what they were. And when I did my research after they did work for me and my husband, it was totally life changing. And I realized that people needed more education and understanding of essential oils and actually how they work for us in our, in our bodies. How do they support us in all of our symptoms, or systems, not symptoms. And so first off, I want to tell you that this is nothing about diagnosing. This is not treating. Uh, this is... Um, not giving you any kind of treatment in any way, shape, or form. This is only suggestions and what you can do on a natural scale for different systems of the body. And our body does a really lot of things that are natural. It does heal itself, it can, if we only give it what it needs. But sometimes in today's environment, it's very difficult to do that. We're exposed to toxins on a daily basis. Everything we touch, the air that we breathe, is toxic to us in a lot of ways. It may not, you may not think so, but it is. And we have tons of plastic things out there. Well, what is plastic made of? Plastic's made of, pet, of petroleum. So if it's a petroleum product and things are stored in it, is it being overheated? Because that evaporation process means something it's not just it's a chemical process in some cases so what can we do on a natural level to help with all the different systems we have in place and i really wanted to address this because i have one particular friend that almost died because her doctor forgot to put her back on her thyroid medication and all she did was her thyroid, well, she broke her shoulder. She fell and broke her shoulder. She's older. And her doctor had taken her off her thyroid medication so that they could give her another medication during that process. I forgot to put her back on it. And because of that, she started going downhill really fast. And it was like, um, you really need to go to the doctor because you're not right. And her voice was changed. She, 
She didn't have any energy. She wanted to sleep all the time. And she actually, by the time she actually did go to the hospital, if she would have waited another couple days, then the likelihoods of her being in a coma was really high, very high. Because she had so many of the symptoms that are due to a thyroid not working. So that addressed my concern that how many other people out there have thyroid issues and don't even know it. Okay. So I want to kind of address that and help you understand what some of the symptoms could be. So first off, what is thyroid disease in the first place? It is a medical condition and it's the function of the thyroid. There's a gland right here. And it's estimated that 59 million Americans have thyroid problems. That's a lot of people. Why is that? And that's a question that I haven't been able to figure out yet, but I really want to get to the heart of it because why do we all have a thyroid that doesn't that messes up and then we get put on medication for the rest of our life? Why is that? And then they still figure that um, there are many Americans that are not even diagnosed with a thyroid issue. <clears throat> and women that are over the age of 50, it's really common. So think about it. if you're over the age of 50 or reaching that age, it's very common in that age group to have thyroidism. Now, there are two significant problems that most of us will hear about. One is hyperthyroidism and one is hypo. So there's a little difference. The <clears throat> hyperthyroidism is where it's an overproduction of hormones. Okay, so this little gland that's here, it's a little butterfly-shaped gland, gives us a lot of hormones that help regulate the body. Okay especially in the part of the endocrine system and I believe part of the and um our you know, many different systems. It's an overall health. Okay. So hyperthyroidism, what does that look like? Hyperthyroidism is, and I have this really nifty chart and I should just actually put it online. And it's a it's a picture. I'll show you what this picture is. This is a pretty cool picture. And look, it's a picture of a woman. <laughs> so hyperthyroidism. What are some of the what are some of the symptoms that you could that might be something to tell you that, hey, you might have a problem with your thyroid. Go get it checked by the doctor. Hair loss, bulging eyes, sweating. Enlarged thyroid, so if you feel it or you feel like it's really big, like this lump in your throat kind of thing, um, then there's a problem, typically. Not necessarily, but there could be. Over rapid heartbeat. Difficulty sleeping. Um, you don't tolerate heat very well. Maybe you've been trying to have a baby and you have not been able to be successful. That's infertility. Maybe you get a little bit irritable, um, muscle weakness, nervousness. Um, maybe your menstrual cycle is not right. Okay. Maybe you're having weight loss without really trying. <clears throat> Frequent bowel movements. So what that means is, is you're constantly having um, bowel movements. It's a, once a, once a day is for most people is fairly normal, but you should have a bowel movement at least once every three days. Okay, that's what they want you to do. In my opinion, it should be every day because that's toxic waste to our body if we're not expelling it. Also, warm, moist palms on a continual basis and con consistency. Um, tremor in the fingers, you know, that vibration or that little bit you can't keep control. And soft fingernails, okay? So my fingernails are always really hard. 
like they get so far and brittle sometimes that they just break off. But um, <clears throat> that's the hyperthyroidism. So what about hypo? Hypo is when this gland does not produce enough hormones, okay? So we have hyper, which is too much, and we have hypo, which is not enough. Now I know growing up, my mother has thyroidism, and um, for her, she would get to that point where she had she was very low energy, um, had a hard time and just managing her day, and she would keep candy bars in the freezer. And when, I always wondered about that, you know. So you know, when we're young, we don't really realize what's going on until we get older. And so she she kept those candy bars because she would get like a low blood sugar. And even though she's not diabetic, and for her, the, um, she is um, hypo, and so she would actually eat a candy bar, which would help her. Okay, but she would be pretty much down for the count the whole day. It was crazy. So now I understand this a little bit more as to what she did for herself. And she's been on thyroid medications for many, many years. But hypothyroidism can create dry, very coarse hair. Uh, loss of your eyebrow hair, so if your eyebrows aren't very good. And then you can also still get an enlarged um, uh, thyroid, okay? So that's on hyper or hypo. Hyper or hypo. And <clears throat> you have a slower heartbeat, not a fast one. You can, it can cause um, arthritis because arthritis is caused by inflammation of the, of the, of the body. Cold, so now we have the hyper where you're heat intolerance, now you're cold intolerance. Okay, so everything about cold is not you. Um, depression, depression is a really big one. Uh, dry skin, fatigue, forgetfulness, so you kind of like get that foggy brain. Um, you get very heavy menstrual cycles, so on the hyper, we're very little, and on the hypo, we're a lot more. Okay, infertility is another one that's, that, can, that can be caused from thyroidism. You can weight, your weight gain. So a lot of people that have a underactive thyroid can be gaining weight and they can't figure out why they're gaining weight. And also constipation. If you're very constipated and aren't going and not having bowel movements on a regular consistency, then just go to the doctor and be checked because I have heard so many stories of people that don't take bowel movements but maybe once a week or once every five days. And it's like, you can't do that. That's not normal. That is not good for your body. Go get checked and have them check your thyroid. Okay. You are your first advocate. Okay. So what these, what we are trying to help you understand is where you're at. Okay. How do you improve your lifestyle? How do you improve you? You are the very first advocate of your body. Doctors don't know what's going on. Until you go to the doctor, give them all of your symptoms, okay? You have to, and don't take no for an answer. That's very important. Get to the root cause of the problems you have. It could be something else. It may not be thyroidism. Maybe it's maybe your um, adrenal fatigue. Maybe um, you're diabetic. Maybe it, there's a lot of things that could take place, but it's having the doctor find out. Because a lot of times, too many times, I think, in my opinion, we have too many doctors that just want to write you a prescription and send you home. <clears throat> but if we decide that we need more than that, then we can push for something different until we do find the problem, find the cause, find the root cause, be, that, be diagnosed right. A lot of times we're not even diagnosed properly until we start getting more symptoms. Um, so, so my, what I'm trying to do for you is help you in <clears throat> maybe giving you an idea of what you can do on a natural scale. Now, when you're not having as many symptoms to where you can go to the doctor or they can't diagnose you because you don't have the symptoms. Okay, so what else can we do? So what causes thyroidism? 
we already know that we have an over overproduction and an underproduction, right, of hormones in our system. And, <clears throat> sorry, we either, um, so hyperthyroidism, we either uh, develop a gland that secretes uh, thyroid hormones that upsets the body's uh, chemical balance. So we all have to have a good balance in our systems, and that's every system, whether it's your endocrine system, the digestive system, you know, we have to have a good balance. And if we don't, things go haywire. Um, we also get inflammation of the thyroid and inflammation of the body. And so that inflammation causes problems as well. And so how do you reduce inflammation of the body? Um, and how do you know if you have inflammation of the body? <clears throat> and so in contrast, your hypothyroidism is the underproduction. So there again, we're not balanced. We have, don't have enough. So it's not secreting the hormones that our body needs to produce the hormones that we need for everyday function. And so that also leads to autoimmune problems. So like Hashimoto's is an autoimmune problem. And Hashimoto's is another one that typically a doctor is going to, the first thing they're doing is help trying to get the thyroid under control because you're going to be an up and down, up and down, up and down until they find something that keeps the thyroid in a um, normal level, okay, for the hormones. But sometimes it's still not enough. Who else are you seeing and where else are you going? Because sometimes they're still not, um, the symptoms aren't the same. They're a little bit different. And it can, and there are ways to test for things. <clears throat> so, and with Hashimoto's, the body is actually attacking your thyroid, okay? And that's not a good thing. <laughs> so the tissue because the body's own body is attacking that thyroid, the, the thyroid dies. And so you could have that for years in that process. It's not an overnight thing. It could be years. Um, sometimes they need to re remove the gland and, uh, and because if it does die, then remove the gland. But sometimes, most of the time, we can be put on medication. Okay. So what can we, uh, um, sorry. <clears throat> so the basic thing about the, what causes your thyroidism is that for, that that for, that gland is not producing the hormones. That's for certain. Okay, that's our number one thing. And then, how would you how would you take care of it? How would you even know? Okay, so we've gone through some. Symptoms, sorry, I have a dog that's like, I want your lap. And I'm like, no, he can't come on my lap. No, you have to sit down. And so with, with that, knowing what symptoms or what, what could be some of the symptoms of hyperthyroid or hypothyroid, okay, you can keep that in mind. Now from there, what are the, um, what else can we do? So... If you have the lack of hormones, one way or the other, or too much of the hormones, what else can we do? And by the way, very seldom do we have cancer of the thyroid. Um, it's a very, um, it's only about 10% that people um, with thyroidism um, have a cancer issue, which is good, right? And sometimes we get uh, little nodules in there that we have to that the doctor has to treat <clears throat> and so that's really good so it's always good to be proactive don't wait till you have so many symptoms or so bad that you go to the doctor and then you can't do something about it right um so think about what's going on in your body what are the symptoms what are you experiencing write them down take a journal journal every day about what did I feel today? What did I do today? And then start, look at a pattern. Are you seeing a pattern? Maybe you're not seeing a pattern. Maybe you have a few days of, of you're just tired and um, you get too warm all of a sudden. And some of us, you know, we get, uh, we're postmenopausal, we get those hot flashes. But it's going to be totally different than that. It's not the same, okay? If you've ever had a hot flash, um, you'll know. 
and because all of a sudden you're just profusely sweaty. <laughs> that's another issue. Okay, and that's a whole another subject. <clears throat> so it's going to be different than that. And what are your bowel movements like? Because that's, that is something that really needs to be addressed. And if you're not regular, please go see the doctor, okay? Find out why and let them know because most of the time they don't ask about your nutrition, okay? Um, <clears throat> you, what you want to do for hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism or just thyroid in itself is you want to watch your diet. And you want to follow a proper diet. What does that look like? Well, eat clean. And eating clean means eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, okay? Don't go out to McDonald's every day. Don't go out to Jack in the Box every day. Those fast foods are not good for you because you don't get nutrition out of them, okay? I don't care how you look at it. It's still not good value for nutrition to your body, okay? There's a lot of salts in those. There's a, there's, there can be a lot of MSG. <clears throat> it's the way, it's maybe, it's not good, clean food. So good, clean food is going to the store. If you can buy organic, buy organic, especially if you have been diagnosed with thyroidism, okay? Organic is going to be a cleaner vegetable, cleaner fruit for you to eat, and fresh fruits and vegetables. Not frozen, okay, because there's other factors in there especially as they wash their fruits and vegetables to be frozen okay so let's, let's think about that in fact i was uh somebody told me about that not too long ago and i'm like oh i never thought about that but that's true you know who does but find out do your research most of us don't want to do our research um so the diet is if it's functioning um of the thyroid um, you want to um Find foods that are that contain the sugars, the fats, and preservatives. Starch are not suited for a thyroid patient. Okay, so those extra ones are not suited for that. Um, you want to restrict those kinds of foods. Okay, so that's why going out all the time is not good, especially and if you're diabetic. Same thing. Um, a thyroid person or person that has a thyroid issue should include your vegetables, fruits, whole grains, multigrains, and sweet potatoes. So who doesn't like sweet potato fries? So if you have a choice of getting sweet potato fries, get the sweet potato fries, so get the regular ones, okay? Um, <clears throat> bakery items like cakes, cookies, pastries, totally avoid them, okay? Not something you need to do, not need to eat. Um, you can eat foods, so if you have a thyroid that's not functioning correctly, okay, um, and that's really good for eyesight, is you get foods that are rich in vitamin A, like um, pumpkins or maybe pumpkin seeds, um, uh, mangoes, carrots for the beta carotene, um, and that's to help in better functioning of the thyroid gland, okay? So I'm going to give you a list. I have a list of foods here. There we go. Okay. So I have a list of foods. So by following a proper diet of fruits and vegetables, okay, whole grains, multigrains, sweet potatoes, that's the important part. So what other foods can help you? So natural sources of iodine. What does iodine help for you? Okay, iodine is the... It helps in regulating that hormone of your thyroid, okay, the hormone balance, okay, that's, what, that's iodine. Natural sources of iodine to balance the thyroid levels are cabbage, onions, garlic, pineapple, strawberries, okay, watercress, And you want to look at, <clears throat> um, if you want to avoid the emotional stress, <laughs> how do you do that? We have a lot of essential oils to help us in reducing stress. Balance is our number one. Balance is a 
blend of hoe wood and frankincense and it's just a lovely lovely fragrance and i'll tell you it's um i put that on a lady the other day that was visiting with me and she actually has a thyroid problem i didn't know this until like this morning and i put that balance on her several days and she said oh my gosh the first time she did she's like i just love this what is this and so i told her but i didn't know until today that she had that thyroid problem so it was something that was helping her balance her stress hormones and so that was something unique for them so doTERRA has a essential oil called balance i use it every day because stress in itself we have every single day it doesn't matter if it's a if it's a lot of stress or just a little bit of stress you know if you if you are having this issue of oh my gosh you're thinking about how what is this going to do or how am i going to do that or it doesn't matter whether it's financial stress a little tiny thing can create a big thing erica did you have a question here let me do you want me to unmute you? Oh, there. Do you have a question? Oh, no, no, no. I just was, I clipped something on my phone. Um, so, no, you're good. Okay. Good information. All right. I'll continue. <laughs> All right. Um, eating a fiber-rich diet. How do we do that? Okay. That's another thing to consider because fiber and rich like pears are really good for fiber. What else is good for fiber? Um, if we are looking to, um, we also look at selenium, zinc, some of the other benefits, deficiencies that can lead um, through to the dysfunction of the thyroid. So when we're depleted in some of our minerals and vitamins, that's another part of what helps the thyroid kind of get off balance. I love doTERRA's lifelong vitality because it gives us everything that we need to help regulate all the different systems of our body, whether that's the brain food, the brain function, thyroid function, endocrine system, uh, the digestive system. It has everything in there. And I love them. I, I couldn't go a day without them because I have them now. And it's like, oh my gosh, I got to go back to it because I've actually listened to health coaches that will test you for different things and they can't figure out why that product does so well for so many people. But I finally said, well, why don't you start thinking about what's individually in those products and not what's the overall product? And that's something that I've had to learn that, especially because I do a bio scan for people and I've had to learn that sometimes it's not the product, it's what's inside the product that somebody needs. And so, my gosh, those lifelong vitality, if you've never experienced them, and if you want to experience them, get with somebody that actually knows about doTERRA or they've shared the video with you because they're such an important part. And there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can't go wrong. Never. And it's like, if you don't like it for whatever reason, they give your money back. I think that's great. I don't know anybody that does that. Usually you go to super supplements or somewhere and you get something. You can't take it back. Okay? They don't give you your money back because you're not satisfied. <laughs> so Tara does. Okay. So I want to real quickly talk about a few other things here. So think about what's missing in your diet. Okay? You want to totally avoid canola oil. That interferes with the production of your thyroid hormones. Okay, so we have tons of things that are fried in canola oil, okay, or they they use canola oil. So always ask, okay? Think about that. If you are already diagnosed with a thyroid issue, you totally don't want to go there, okay? Um, you want to avoid caffeine. Okay. Caffeine is not good for you either. It interferes with the production of thyroid hormones. There again. And it also accelerates the heart rate. Okay. So like if you've got palpitations every now and then or tremors um, or profusely sweating here and there, get rid of the caffeine. That's not just coffee. 
<laughs> There's a lot of things that have caffeine in them. Read the labels. Learn to be a re label reader. Ginger tea helps in um, your producing thyroid hormones. Okay, so ginger is another really good one. Um, and we do have ginger essential oil that I would recommend it to be in an, in your tea uh, that way because it's very potent. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that you can't, if it's something that you like, then go do that, okay? Um, but if you're looking for the ginger, what's nice about essential oils, you can just place them topically on you, okay? That's another. So I unmuted for a second. Okay. Uh, so actually, I use the ginger with turmeric in my morning latte, which I do with coconut milk and organic coffee, um, just to get the benefits of the ginger. Because I'm still, I just need my one morning beverage, and then I'm unless I do a green tea in the afternoon, I'm pretty much off caffeine for the rest of the day because I don't do process. So just a little putting that out there that that's actually that golden latte concept is kind of fun <laughs> with the ginger essential oil. That's yeah. Information, you know, because it's how can you deliver that to you without just drinking it in water and just putting mm -hmm. them topically. So I know um, smoothies and things like that are awesome to be able to. Yeah, so I'm hoping that doTERRA comes out with the turmeric soon because I'm having to get my turmeric essential oil somewhere else. I know it's in the blue polyphenol, but the actual oil, I'm having to use a, a different brand. Uh -huh. Yes, and we have several, besides the deep blue polyphenol, we have several products that have the turmeric in it. Um, the Lifelong mm -hmm. Bites, the Body and Minerals, they have it in there too, so... Um, but some it'd just be nice to see the pure oil come out. Right. It'd be nice to have something beyond that. Um, and, and it may be that we can't get it. I don't know. You know, that's something to think about, about as far as doTERRA. If it's not sustainable and if it's something that we cannot um, get all the time um, with that meets their standards, we don't get it. And we might right. get some of the products, but we don't get it as a single for um, for the rest of us because there's not enough to go around so I think that's an important part of doTERRA mm -hmm. we need to know but but that's awesome but keep asking just keep asking yeah. hey. Unfortunately, the brand why is is organic and does have supplement pack. so yep. Yep. I'll just leave it at that okay sounds good thank you for that um so another thing too is warm you know don't overheat yourself and don't overcool yourself um, and what are some of the oils that you could use in place of to help out with stuff? And coconut milk too, by the way, is very good. You can actually, like you, like Erica, you gave us your recipe that you do. But drinking coconut milk, um, you can add a teaspoon of coconut oil in a glass of milk if you're a milk drinker. Um, especially if you like find yourself like on. Um, not feeling very good and that's how you can kind of get yourself back up to par you know, you've got to drink a lot of fluids um your zinc is also like pears we know are good but a lot of fruits like oranges um cantaloupe um you've got blackberries are really good for zinc avocados are really good for us you know that's a different kind of fat like oh there's a lot of fat in avocados but it's a different kind of fat I do one a day at lunch. Hey, I, I typically have at least half of one every day. Um, um, well, I, I can't do the half because it, it turns color and noise. So I just end up getting the small ones. Yeah, well, I split mine with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, anyway, another thing to think about with um, doTERRA products in itself is is do a complete cleanse of every system of your body. And that includes your skin. A lot of people don't realize that the skin is a, as an organ, you know, and if it, we abuse it every single day. So how can we help with that? And there are products for that. There's a complete cleanse. If you're interested in knowing what that is, you can just Google search um, doTERRA 30 day cleanse and you'll find plenty of um, information in that way. But you know, the lifelong vitality, our uh, GX assist, the probiotics that we have, PB assist, 
Um, and another thing that is really helpful is called the Roma Touch technique, which is something that is um, a technique using specific oils on the body, typically it's along the spine and on the feet, to help the body in reducing inflammation, helping get rid of toxic load, you're balancing and getting and helping relax the body, and you're helping the body come back to homeostasis which is what you want. So if you ever think about um, how you can reduce inflammation, that's another way. Frankincense is a great essential oil for helping reduce inflammation of the body. Okay? And, and if you look at the Lifelong Vitality Pack, it's another one that will help reduce inflammation of the body. Your supplementation. And so if you're not eating right, if you're not eating your balanced meals every day, and really it, it is a balance and it's not a lot. A lot of us Americans overeat. When you go out to eat, you get way too much proportion to eat. And so that's why we have so much obesity. But since we're talking about thyroid, it's really important to get those vitamins and minerals in your system. And it's just, where, what else can you do? If you have a lot of discomfort in your and your muscles support, then we have a product called Deep Blue. Massage therapy is really good for that too. The Aroma Touch Technique is another one good for that. Find someone in your area that can do Aroma Touch Technique. I'm actually certified through doTERRA to train for that, and I do this training a couple times a year. I love it. This is how I met Erica, and <laughs> it's always fun to the people that I do meet. Um, and then, the other thing that you want to uh, consider is, um, you know, just be mindful of your own body. What are you experiencing? What are you going through? It could be something different than thyroid, but find a doctor that you can go to. I just recently found a medical doctor that's in our area. She's brand new, and she is on the holistic side. And I'm like, yay! <laughs> So it's wonderful to find those nurse practitioners, you know, your advanced nurse practitioners, the ones that are really open to natural products so that they can give you all the alternatives out there and not just, you know, prescribe you a, or give you a prescription for something. It's let's treat you and not just the symptom. And so go find those people, go find your naturopathic doctors, Go find your medical doctors that are on the, the uh, natural side and um, and go in and, and find out what's going on. And if it's something different, they can give you all, all your choices and you decide if natural is where you want to go. If you want to stay on the western side of medication, then that's your choice. Okay. And but we're here to have you understand that there's more than just that. There's a lot of information, there's a lot of science information out there that will help you understand what those alternatives are. So I encourage you to go out there and do your own research as well, okay? Find out what's, what's out there that you can help, especially when you are totally diagnosed. When you get that diagnosis, okay, now what are my choices, okay? Think about that because sometimes there's more than there's always more than one choice. So I want to thank you again for being here today. I enjoy being able to give you guys some understanding of essential oils and other modalities and things that you can do for your own wellness. Be your own advocate is number one. Listen to your body because we usually always have symptoms. We ignore them thinking, oh, it'll go away. And yeah, it might go away, but it's going to come back again, and it's going to come back again until the point where you're like, I just don't feel good. And now you're rushing to go to the doctor because you really don't feel good. So think about those first symptoms. If you really enjoyed this training, uh, this education, please share it with other people. If you are um, wanting the live or the replay link, because so this is recorded and I just sent out with the replay, you can text the word, the at sign, Heaven's Oil, H E A V E N S O I L. So that's Heaven's Oil, with the at sign, 
and you, you will get into my remind system that is for the live and replay links. Um, I do have a Facebook group, but it is a closed group, so if you would like in that, just please let me know. It's, um, you can ask to join, and it's heaven sent oil, just like that, and sense is S-E-N-T. So God gave us what we have, what we need, we just have to learn how to use it, okay? Um, so those two things, um, if you have, if this has been shared by someone, and you want to know more, then get with them and find out what you can do for yourself. You guys have a great week, and we will see you again next week. So this uh, occurs every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, or Daylight Time, whichever, whichever time of the year it is. I wish we'd get rid of that. <laughs> I can't keep track sometimes. So you guys have a great week, and thanks for being here. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.